Step 5. Polarization. Now that we are done with boundary conditions, we saw that considering different components of the electric field and the magnetic field really matters, because they change when we travel from dielectric 1 into dielectric 2. In the next lesson, we are going to apply these boundary conditions, and we will see that polarization plays an important role. So, let's recap a uh, um, few important things about polarization, and in what ways electromagnetic waves can be polarized. So, so far we have encountered linearly polarized light. We always were considering simple examples, where our electromagnetic wave was traveling in the z-direction, and the electric field was oscillating only in the x-direction. And we wrote it down as follows, with this simple form. We said that the, our electric field had some magnitude E0, it was oscillating in the x-direction, and here is the sine component of the wave, and the mm, uh, time variation. So, if we look at the wave as it is coming at us, we see the following picture. We see that it's only oscillating in this x-direction. And in the previous step, we have we said that this is not the most general um, general case. In fact, it can oscillate in a line in any uh, direction along the x in the xy plane. In particular, it can do the following. Now we have to write down the um, the electric field in the following way. Since we have two directions, ex and ey, we have to add another label to our magnitude e naught. There is a magnitude in the x direction, e naught x and a magnitude in the y direction, e naught y. Don't forget that in this picture, x is, the, x is the vertical direction and y is the horizontal direction, because z is coming at, at us directly from, uh, from the screen. And we see that um, from the mathematical expression here, but also from uh, our animation here, that when the x direction of the field reaches its maximum, y direction also reaches its maximum. When the x direction is zero, the y direction is also zero. The component along the y direction is zero. That means that in here, the components are along the x and y directions are in phase. And this is a defining property of linearly polarized light. When the light is linearly polarized, it oscillates uh, in such a way that the x and y components are in phase. Of course, for a general uh, wave traveling in an arbitrary direction, it's not just the x and y components, but it's the components that are perpendicular to the direction of the travel. But here a natural question arises. Do we need for these components to oscillate in phase? What if they don't do that? Of course. We can have such a polarization as well, where we introduce some phase difference between these oscillations. So, let's see what happens. Such a light is called elliptically polarized light. Why that is, is going to become apparent very, very shortly. First, we will start with a mathematical description of the wave. It's exactly the same thing as for a linearly polarized light, except now one of the components is shifted by some phase delta. So mathematically, we can write it down very simply. But actually, what happens when we do the animation? We see that the following thing happens. Now, the electric field is tracing out an ellipse in the xy plane. This is a particular example for delta equals pi over 4. Notice closely what the components along the x directions and the y directions are doing. When the x direction, so the vertical axis, reaches its maximum, the y direction, or the horizontal axis, is still moving. They're out of phase with each other. And this is what gives rise to this elliptical shape, and hence the name elliptically polarized light. Let's consider a particular example of an elliptically polarized light. Let's say that the shape that we are trying to trace out in the xy plane is a circle. Such a light is called circularly polarized light. Can you think how to achieve circularly polarized light? All you have to do is take our expression for the electric field over here and set E0x 
equal to E naught Y. So the two amplitudes in the X and Y components are identical. And the phase difference delta has to be pi over two. You can substitute it in our expression for the electric field and do the mathematics. Or you can simply look at uh, the following animation. This is how circularly polarized light behave. You see that now the point uh, is tracing out a nice circle in the xy plane. If you look at the components in the x and y directions of, the, of E0, you see that when one component reaches maximum, the other one is zero. When the other component reaches maximum, the first component is zero, and so on. And this is why we don't get an ellipse, but a nice circle. So this is the view of the wave if we are looking directly along the z-axis at the wave as it is traveling towards us. Let's revert back to our view that we were using before and see what a circularly polarized light looks like. And here it is. Now you see that it's really a spiral traveling around the z-axis as it propagates through along the z-axis. You may think that why are we bothering with all these types of polarizations? Isn't linearly polarized light enough? We will see that elliptically and circularly polarized light are actually very useful in quantum technologies and in quantum communication in particular in the following module. So please don't forget what we have learned in this lesson.